Welcome to chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. Another very difficult uh, chapter for me to go through. It's taken me two or three days thinking about everything because there's so many possibilities. And it's not written in black and white. Well, it's written in black and white, but it's not told. You're not told. There's a lot of allegories of sorts uh, in this chapter and trying to figure out uh, what's literal and what's an allegory. Uh, is not easy. But uh, basically, in the 12th chapter, we have uh, three new entities. Uh, A woman, our wife, the dragon, and the male child. It begins uh, with the woman. Here, a great sign in verse 1, appeared in the heaven, a guinea wearing the sun and the moon underneath. Uh, her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, if you would have noticed, it said Gini uh, in the Greek. Uh, the Gini, and so I'm trying to figure out in the last couple of days, well, who is the Gini? And I had translated woman, all the Bibles have woman, which makes sense. But until I started going through this, and I'm thinking, well, what are the other possibilities? Who are called women uh, in the book of Revelation? And the first one uh, was called Jezebel, and uh, one I, I should have written the uh, down which uh, church it was uh, of the seven churches of Jezebel who uh, tried to uh, bring the brothers into sexual immorality. But that just doesn't go with all the things in this chapter that Jezebel probably died a long time ago. And then the second woman is on a scarlet beast later in this book. And this doesn't make sense. The woman on a scarlet beast, to me, wouldn't be the same woman here because here you're talking about an evil and something good. So I gave that one up as that's that's not the woman on the scarlet beast. The three, there are certain things in here that talks about giving birth to a male child. And so I thought, well, who else could that be except for Mary? But then Mary being in heaven with the sun uh, on her head and the feet under the moon under her feet, uh, you'd have to really push that uh, into a heavy allegory. The next one I thought about, which I was thinking, well, this is a good possibility and impossible he is. Uh, it was, it's an allegory about Eve and the creation of man and the creation until the destruction of the beast and what happens uh, to man in an allegorical way from the devil appearing to Mary and right at the beginning in Genesis. So that made a lot of sense to me. I was thinking of that. The other uh, guinea in the Bible is mentioned in uh, chapter 19, 7. It says, Let us rejoice and exult, and let us give the glory to him. For the wedding of the Lamb is come, and his guine prepared herself. And it was given to her that she should wear fine linen, bright and clean. So the guine here is, uh, gives, is given um, human el- attributes, a wife, preparing herself, wearing clothes, and so forth. But then in 21.9, we receive more information on the Gini, and it says, And one came from out of the seven angels, having the seven bowls uh, full of the seven last calamities. And he spoke with me, saying, Come, I will show you the wife, the Gini, the bride of the Lamb. That's 21.9. And what did he show him? He showed him the new Jerusalem, this cube coming down from out of heaven. So then I'm thinking, wow, this, is, this really sounds like it's it because the uh, woman wearing the sun and the moon under her feet, which would make sense with this cube coming down from heaven, could go wherever it went. It's a good chance that it was in between the uh, earth and the sun when Jesus was on the cross, and it shadowed it, uh, gave it an eclipse for uh, four hours. Uh, We were having an eclipse here, as I mentioned, uh, in August the 21st, total eclipse across 
the whole United States, the first one in 100 years. And it's only 90 seconds. It's going to be right over my house. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are coming down to my, my little neighborhood to sit here and watch this uh, episode that's going on in the heaven. So I'm just thinking, well, you know, it would be these taking, he's using um, the New Jerusalem and giving it all of these uh, uh, attributes of human experience. So if that's the case, then why couldn't it be in the first chapter with uh, the woman or the wife? And so uh, I'm going to call her the wife because this is what I think it is. Number five, the New Jerusalem. I could be wrong, but this is my take on it. And uh, this uh, wife it mentions through here, I'll just summarize it before we go through it because it kind of jumps all over and without uh, putting it into perspective of a, t a totality, it's difficult to remember. But it's a, uh, so she has a, a we're in the sun, the moon under her feet, a crown of 12 stars upon her head. Well, 12 stars in the heavens, well, that makes a lot of sense. But then it sort of goes and she, it's, she's pregnant. And I'm thinking, well, now, you know, how can this new Jerusalem become pregnant? Well, it calls her a, the wife. So a wife, uh, some, some woman that has basically you have sex with and you have children with. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't be your wife. Why would you be married if you uh, weren't preparing for that? And then she was travailing and tormented to give birth. So there's maybe something in that new Jerusalem that was a coming and something that hindered it, uh, because it says uh, uh, the, the Guinea fled into the wilderness to a place prepared by God. And this good possibility be that this cube uh, is under attack by the uh, heavenly demons and was uh, es escaping, leaving. It sounds like it's something that can move around. Again, it says it was given two wings of the great eagle. Now, what the two wings of the great eagle are, I don't know what they could be. Now, you could look and say, well, this has nothing to do with the New Jerusalem. It's a person. And who was pregnant, travailing to give birth? But Mary. And where, where did she flee into the wilderness to pre a place prepared by God? You could say, well, possibly Egypt. But was she given two wings of the great eagle and then nourished 1,260 days? And you could say, well, that was the time in Egypt until they came back. And I suppose you'd have an argument for that. And she was nourished there time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. Well, the serpent was not mentioned uh, it coming to Mary that I can think of. But then it says, give birth to a, a male. So that would make sense that Mary had the male. And the earth helped, swallow, helped the woman and swallow down the river, which was shot out of the mouth of the dragon, who we'll go into here next. So this dragon... Uh, this um, being that was in heaven came to earth, had all this power coming after the, uh, after the woman. So all this, I was thinking, well, it could be Eve. Uh, the man has been, become born, and now the Satan, uh, the dragon has come to earth, and he's coming to Eve and trying to get her and misleading her to um, eat the fruit that she was not supposed to. And her seed, giving heed to the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus. So it's not only Jews, but having the testimony of Jesus. So that could be either, I suppose, Mary or um, Eve, or it could be um, the earth helped swallow down. See, and this is where I have a hard time with it being the New Jerusalem, because uh, uh, how would the earth help this uh, New Jerusalem? I don't know. I'm doing the best I can with uh, trying to explain this. I've been tossing and turning over it. The other second uh, entity, major entity that we're introduced to is the fiery dragon, the ancient serpent, the devil, and Satan. It's all mentioned in one place. Uh, this is who this fiery dragon is. An uh, ancient serpent appeared, uh, apparently it was before earth uh, was made or at the beginning of the creation it was created uh, and before man came. It says in Genesis 3, 1, but the serpent was most skilled of all the wild beasts upon the earth whom the Lord made. So there was something different about this serpent than every other animal. Wild beast is basically an animal and was before man. 
And then in 3.14, it says, And the Lord God said to the serpent, so he was able to communicate. It mentions the serpent coming uh, to uh, God in, uh, in Job. And it says, Because you did this, accursed are you from all the cattle and from all the wild beasts of the earth. So this um, nefarious being was uh, uh, because it caused man to sin was accursed. And then it says that there's, he's a sign in the heaven. The dragon is a sign in the heaven. And this dragon has uh, 10 horns, which in 13.1, which we'll get to next, uh, it's tied to the wild beast, which is not the same. The uh, authority is given to the wild beast by the dragon. And the seven, seven heads are tiled tied to the wild beast in 13 ones and the seven diadems are tied to the wild beast in 13 one when we get to 13 we will go through this in more detail the dragon has a tail drags one third the stars from the heaven to earth so now that he has a tail and he drags so why wouldn't the new jerusalem be able to uh, do something uh, like that have a same type of an allegory it stands before the woman uh, to deliver uh, to devour her child. So uh, the, the child of the woman, the, uh, the wife, the guinea, is the believers possibly, and it's just one child, of Jesus, and war, it waged war, the demon waged war with Michael and his angels. So there was a war in the heaven where this new Jerusalem was and the place uh, in a, a vast expanse that uh, there was a place in the heaven that was separated. Apparently, they had a, th a throne. It had the um, uh, altar and the temple and so forth, but where it says it doesn't in the New Jerusalem. So there's this part of heaven that we don't know about or another dimension uh, that is like that. And it says um, that the dragon prevailed not, and he lost his place in heaven. So this was probably at the beginning of creation. And he goes in misleading the entire inhabitable world. And you go and find out about that in uh, chapter 20, in verses 2, 7, and 8. And you read those and you'll see where it's always talking about him uh, misleading the inhabitable world that he's come. And he was cast into the earth with his angels, it says. Then in Luke 10, 18, uh, Jesus says to them, I viewed Satan as lightning falling from out of the heaven. So Jesus, being uh, the beginning of creation, uh, in, in having and the Creator and the Father, that he saw this Satan die, uh, leaving, and so this was probably at the beginning of the uh, creation, my guess. And he had the dragon has a great rage when he comes and has a short time. Well, a short time is Lord couple thousand years, three, four, five thousand years is not long in the expanse of the eons of the eons, which <laughs> is way longer than five thousand years. And um, it says that he's the accuser of the brothers before God day and night. And we will be getting to all these things in this chapter. It says in verse in Job 1, 6, and behold, the sons of God came to stand before the Lord and the devil, who which was the dragon, came in the midst of them. So he was able to come there and uh, accuse him. And the Lord, and then uh, in uh, Zechariah 3, 1 and 2, it says, And the Lord showed to me uh, Esus. That's, it says Joshua, but Jesus is the same spelling for Esus in the Greek. The great priest standing in front of the angel of the Lord. I believe that's Jesus. It's not the Joshua that was the priest in the temple. And the devil standing at the right of him. So here we have um, the, the, the angel of the Lord, Jesus there, and the devil in the, the throne possibly. And what the devil was being an adversary against him as he was when he came um, to um, bring him into the um, wilderness to test him. And the Lord said to the devil, Yahweh, said, may uh, Yahweh reproach against you, O devil, and may the Lord reproach against you, the one choosing Jerusalem. Oh, there we go, Jerusalem. Where have we heard about Jerusalem? Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jesus cried over Jerusalem. The rejection of Jerusalem, the result 
is utter destruction. It's back again, has become a city, has become a nation of Israel, but I see that it's going to be destroyed again. It's going to have a temple, but then it'll be destroyed again, and uh, the uh, things uh, that the devil has chosen Jerusalem. Here later we'll get into the holy city. We'll get into the Babylon also, which I believe is Jerusalem. It's not Rome. And then he takes away the word, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, and then the devil, uh, it says in the Gospels, uh, he takes away uh, the word from people. In the parable of the sores, and then the woman bound for 18 years, hemorrhaging, a woman was bound by Satan. And Satan is told, mentioned of entering into Judas Iscariot, who denied the Lord. So uh, the accuser of the brothers before God, day and night, and us. And then it says that he, the dragon, pursued the woman who gave birth to the male. And it shot water from out of his mouth as water of a river to make her river born. Now, what that means as far as in heaven, it, it may be an attack against the new Jerusalem, but somehow uh, the earth was like a giant sponge. It soaked up uh, the things that the devil was doing against this new Jerusalem and uh, became the devil, uh, the dragon was provoked to anchor against the Gini, against the Gini, the, the new Jerusalem, and we went to war with the rest of her seed which were the people have to do with this uh, new Jerusalem, this cube. And it were mentioned in Isaiah 27, 1 and 2, it says, In that day, God will bring on the holy and the great and the strong sword against the dragon, the fleeing serpent, fleeing, against the dragon, the crooked serpent, and he will do away with the dragon, the one in the sea, and that could be the wild beast he talks about in 13.1 because it says there that the dragon gave power to the wild beast from the sea. And like I said, we'll go into 13.1, the dragon, uh, the, the beast next. The other entity that we haven't seen before is the male child. Can't imagine it being anything but Jesus. But if it was Eve on this whole thing, it could be Adam. It says it was about to tend the nations with a rod of iron could be talking about man taking rule of the earth and uh, I have a I, to me it would be Jesus and he was snatched away to God and his throne and Jesus was crucified and taken away and it was taken up into heaven so that to me it would be probably Jesus the two other entities of note that are we've mentioned before are Michael who wages war an angel or a, with the dragon and his angels Michael this uh, heavenly being. Maybe he's not an angel. Maybe he's something else. We don't know. Uh, and then the other are the brothers <clears throat> who are accused by Satan uh, before God day and night, which would probably be uh, the brothers would we would be included. But these were uh, overcame Satan by, by the blood of the Lamb. Well, they, Jesus has overcome Satan through the blood, his blood by dying on the cross and through the word of their testimony, uh, but it says, love not their life unto death. So to me, it seems like this is a future group of the 144,000, uh, the ones wearing the white robe, and it's not the church. There's no place uh, after the seven churches that the church is uh, ever mentioned again in the book of Revelation. The city of Jerusalem on earth is never mentioned in the book of Revelation. So now we'll go through it uh, and fairly quickly, because most of this I brought out. And in verse 2 it says, And uh, the woman, the wife, the guinea, having one in the womb, gastri, gastric, she cried out, travailing, and being tormented to give birth, which is normal for a, a woman, but how was uh, the guinea of heaven uh, tormented? Uh, because it wanted to come down. Somehow this nefarious being was able to cause a problem up there in the heaven. And appeared another Simeon in the heaven. It's in the heaven again. Uh, with, so makes sense with this uh, Gini being the new Jerusalem. And behold, a great fiery dragon, having seven heads, ten horns upon his heads, were seven diadems. In 13.1, we'll get into that. And his tail drags a third of the stars of the heaven. 
There we go. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stands before the Gini about to give birth, that whenever she should give birth, uh, he should devour her child. And she bore a male son who was about to tend all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was snatched away to God and to his throne. Sure sounds like Jesus and Mary, but... And the woman fled, the Gini fled, the wife fled into the wilderness where she has a place being prepared by God. Then the Gini, the New Jerusalem, could have been moved out of place waiting for the time to come. That there she should be nourished 1,260 days, the same amount of time that the two uh, witnesses, the prophets, were in Jerusalem witnessing uh, the things on the earth. Mm, so, well, I'm not exactly sure how the two would tie in, but we'll go through and continue, and hopefully we will be revealed. And there was war in the heaven. Mikael and his angeli, angels, to wage war with the draconis, tra, drakontos, uh, with the drakontos. Okay, this, so now this Michael and his angels was like the dragon and his angels. So this Michael was, if it was an angel, he was more powerful, maybe more powerful than an angel. And the dracon waged war with his angels, Michael's. And he, the dragon, prevailed not, nor was a place found for him, the dragon, any longer in the heaven. So there's this war going on with the Gini, the wife, the New Jerusalem, the cube coming down. Probably never heard any of this before, have you? I haven't heard any of this before either. It just came to me yesterday when I was going through, and I was, the word woman, Gini, 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 words. And then I started, and I saw this in the 22nd chapter. I'm going, bingo, wow. So how does this fit? And as I go through, it looks like it fits more and more. And uh, the great dracon, uh, dracon was cast out, the ancient serpent being called the Diavolos and Satanas, the one misleading the entire inhabitable world, was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast with him. So the uh, creation, uh, Satan comes down. The first person that was uh, created uh, was Adam. And Eve was then came out of Adam, and then here comes angel, uh, Satan, and does his thing and lies and misleads, which it says. This is his modus operandi. And I heard a great uh, voice or a sound in the heaven saying, Well, now has come the deliverance and the power and the kingdom. And that is when the New, Jer New Jerusalem appears and the believers go there, of our God in the authority of his Christu. For the accuser of our brothers was cast down, the one accusing them before our God day and night. Now, the accuser was, uh, the, the Satan was bound, put into the abyss for a thousand years, came back and attacked Jerusalem again. Some of this may be referring all the way to the after the thousand years. That's another possibility. Uh, and they, who are they, uh, the brothers, overcame him, that is the um, dracon, through the blood of the lamb. The only way they could uh, overcome the lamb was a propitiation for our sins, for our destruction to be sent, uh, to be devoured by the dracon forever in the eons of the eons, in the infernal flames that are eternal, everlasting, aeonio, however you want to say it, there's a no stop, and it's not a place anybody in their right mind would want to be. Only if you've listened to the lie and you don't believe the word of God, then you'll be a victim uh, of this uh, being. And through the word of their testimony, and they love not their life, until death. And the brothers, as I mentioned, were probably the ones that are going through this period of time. Because of this, be glad, O heavens, and O ones encamping in them. Well, who's encamping in the heavens? In New Jerusalem, and the people in the New Jerusalem. And then, woe to the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you. So now, the heavens, uh, New Jerusalem has been freed of this attack, able to go where it wants, and this is what I see it. 
and Earth is now the hunting grounds for the dracon. He's hunting you. He's hunting me. He's having great rage, knowing that he has a short time. Now, we don't know uh, how many years it's been, but he doesn't have long. So he's going to do the best he can to destroy, and Jesus said he's the destroyer. It's called Apollyon, the destroyer, the father of lies. And when the dracon saw that he was cast to the earth, he pursued the guinea. Now, uh, the woman. Now, this could be uh, Eve here, uh, and who gave birth to the male. It might be a different uh, guinea. It uh, could be Eve, could be Mary, who gave birth to the male, and were given to the uh, guinea, the guineki, guineka, uh, the woman, two uh, wings of the great eagle that she should fly into the wilderness to her place where she should be nourished there a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, it could be there's a different uh, guinea uh, as because it's on earth where she should be nourished there a time and time and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent shot from out of his mouth uh, water as a river after the woman that she should that he should make her river born. I don't know what that where that would be, if it's in, uh, but it sounds like it's on earth. So if that was on earth, then uh, it could be with um, like I was mentioning Mary going into Egypt. I don't know or some could be a future thing that's going on. And the earth helped the Guinea and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed down the river which the drac dracon shot from out of his mouth. So this is now on earth. And the drac dracon was provoked to anger against the Guinea and went forth to make war with the rest of her seed, giving heed to the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus. This is happening in the future, I believe. Well, he's been after us, but a lot of this may be taking place in this uh, allegory of this uh, Guinea Guinea key it mentions here could be some other um, wife or a woman, something that a person that appears in the in the end at this time when the beast uh, does all these things that are coming out. Uh, it could be an allegory of a place where the Guinea um, of the uh, on the scarlet beast it talks about later was an allegory uh, for a place which I believe is uh, Jerusalem. So. We'll continue and go into uh, the 13th chapter where it gets into detail on the dracon and uh, the wild beast from the sea. And I hope you'll join us. Pretty interesting uh, things that it's talking about of the future. And hope you'll join us and God bless.